But it's John Schwabus from PolicyViz.com with another Data Viz critique. This one of the famous wind map from Martin Wartenberg and Fernando Villegas. I'm reminded of this particular map from a tweet by Martin over the weekend, which I'll come to in a second. But I just wanted to show this map because it's one of the visuals that I often share with students to talk about how should we critique a visualization. Because when you look at this page, there's more to it than just a map and these streaks that are the wind, right? And right now it's the middle of the day on Monday, August 30th. So as you can see, uh, Hurricane Ida, which I now has been uh, downgraded to a tropical storm, is really uh, turning here in Louisiana. And I'm hoping, of course, that folks are okay and, and surviving in the storm's path. But I wanted to point out that when I think about a critique, there's more to it than just saying, this is a map outline of the United States with dark colors and the winds, right? There, there's more to it than that, right? There's what's going on in the map itself. Notice that we've got the dark gray color. The streaks for the winds are in white. Notice the cities that are plotted here, right? It's 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 interesting what cities are plotted and what cities are not shown. Like, I'm not sure I would select Columbus as one of my default cities to actually show on this map. And notice again, we can go even further in. They use a certain black and white color palette here on the names of these cities, right? So it has a white glow around each of the names. We also have the circles that are of different sizes, presumably sized to the population of the city. And then we could back up a little bit, look at the entire visual, the entire page. Notice that the wind map up here is in this particular font. It's the same dark gray color as the map, and it's all lowercase. And notice that really the only thing on this page that's uppercase is the date, August 30, 2021 at 11.40 Eastern time. Uh, it's a little later now as I record this, so uh, it hasn't quite updated. You see we've got the top speed and the average speed, again, sitting right here in that gray color. It's not a black, it's not a red, it's that gray color and it's lowercase. And we go into the legend here. The legend, just like the map, is animated. And notice that we have this seemingly sort of interesting set of speeds, 1, 3, 5, 10, 15, and 30. And of course, what's happening with 30 when we look at a storm like Ida, you know, these winds topped out yesterday at I believe something like 154 miles per hour. So we've got this interesting uh, selection on the legend. And then there's nothing else on the page. You know, we'll, we'll ignore what's going on down here, but there's nothing else on the page, right? There's no borders for the states. There's no other labels for cities. And then, of course, we have the interactivity that I won't go into right now. But I was reminded of this because Martin uh, posted a tweet over the weekend talking about the scaling of the brightness by the top wind speed, and they also only plot wind over land, which we just looked at. So when a hurricane is heading to landfall, the map was ominously, unreadably dark. It's a technical bug, but an emotional feature. You can see this from his tweet uh, over the weekend. You can see how Ida is just sort of making its way. You can sort of see it down here. And now when we get to the live results, what's happening right now, we get a certain perspective of the visual, of the data. And so when you're thinking about criticizing or critiquing or commenting on visualizations, don't just do that surface level. Go deeper. Think deeper about the visualization. It's not just a map with white lines on it. There's more to it. And everything that I just mentioned here was a decision made by the creators. And whether you agree or disagree with those decisions, those were conscious decisions that were made about this particular visual. So I hope that was useful. It's not really a critique, just sort of a discussion of thinking about critique. Uh, and I was reminded uh, of this project by Martin's uh, tweet over the weekend. So uh, check out more critiques on this YouTube page by subscribing below.